give this a little bit of a rinse. One of you guys pull that wire up, please. Hoping he has enough concrete. I can hear him rattling already. Enough, are we? Here, 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 here. Got a question for you. He's out. Can we lower the grade a little bit in here? Because we ain't getting another truck. Yeah, sure. No issue. Okay, yep. Where, now, where's the door gonna go? Uh, it's right center of the building. I got a so there's like a three foot door right here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care if it's got a little I don't care if there's a little step down. If you want to take what do you want to take the whole thing down half an inch? I don't know if we gotta go even quite that much, but we gotta go a little bit. Just take the whole thing, just take it right down from the wall and everything. Leave we it could on we could place. match this little yeah. see that thing right there that they put in the wall? Yeah, just match that, you'd be fine all the way across. Okay. Yeah. Should we still drop that a whisker? Drop everything. Okay. Yeah, drop everything. Yeah. Whatever you need, just level it out. Be fine. Quarter inch, whatever you need, take it all the way across. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. That'll give us plenty then. Yeah. It won't hurt a thing. Oh, that sucks. That other one, we ended up pouring it dead flat. Because they never uh, pitched their wall. Oh, really? So I ended up raising the door. I ended up putting a steel, a small steel plate for your plate under the door and then drug it in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Weren't you going back and overlay that or something? I thought called. he never called. He never called. Well, I left it like that just in case he did. Yeah. Right. If he would talk about maybe having to come back and right. overlay and stamp it. So right. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we can't get a balance truck. He's too busy today, so we're gonna have to drop this down about a quarter of an inch probably to fill that last little piece in over there. I got as much concrete as I could on both trucks, hoping it would do it. Hey. Yeah, we. I mean, I think if we if we match the champer, we're gonna be shoveling a half a yard out. But thinking of just dropping this a quarter. We almost got it now and we're still up the grade here right here so just have to get a different straight edge yeah we could yeah just match the chamfer drop this a little bit and probably end up shoveling a bunch out but i don't think we're getting another truck you want the vibrator to vibrate the edge? 
Yeah, maybe where there's got a chamfer on here, probably be a good idea. Siding on, and then this trim board that should cover that, I think. Probably leave the rest until we know we're going to have enough. Okay. Oh wow, yeah. Okay, we can drop this side a little bit more. Let me grab a full screw. Strike her out there pretty hard. He ain't got much more in a bucket over there, probably. No. Yeah, just go back and do it a little bit more. <laughs> any better <laughs> we should be a little bit yeah. time we get there huh? <laughs> hamstrings oh, yeah. now I'm almost there good hamstring workout Didn't do my Pilates this weekend. Pilates. <laughs> oh. 
Only if it's red meat. Giving you much class, but I don't want you to take any more out. Okay. Woo! Hey, I offered. No leg workout today. We probably got a good hour or so before we got to worry about finishing anything. So we'll get cleaned up, get all the tools put away, get ready to get ready for the finishing. And I do, I do like the bull vibe, you know, from MBW. I'd say, I'd say that's a good thing. If you need something with vibration to help consolidate the concrete as you, as you bolt load it, you know, we'll see what happens with the finishing. But I don't suspect there'll be much difference in the finishing. All right, so here we are, about an hour later. The concrete's setting up really, really good, and you can see our solution to, to you know, we ran a probably three or four wheelbarrows short on that patio slab, so we had to end up dropping the whole thing about a half an inch. So instead of going about five inches thick in the back to four in the front, it goes about four and a half to three and a half now. And you know, the guy running the job was there. His name was Eric, and we went, you know, we went over the details with him, and he said, "No problem. It's not going to hurt anything." Still plenty thick enough for a patio. I mean, for foot traffic and everything like that, it's plenty thick enough. Nothing's gonna really be any different as far as the thickness goes, the strength goes, or anything like that. There he is right there on the right. So he's the guy running the job. He was happy with it, so we were happy. There was no way we was getting any more concrete. The concrete companies that we have around our area, they're so short on concrete drivers that, you know, getting trucks is really, really hard. And to try to get a balance load out here for that would have been crazy. Now, when I figured the concrete, it did figure between 20 and 21 yards for both of these pours. You know, when we had 21 on both those trucks, so you can see it was really close to what it figured, just a little bit over. So here we are finishing the patio. Uh, Luke started finishing the garage slab with the power trowel, but this patio slab is ready to go. So I'll just, this will just show you, give you a little bit of insight as to how we do our broom finish patios you know we'll we'll join them we, i think we put three joints in this one we edge them and then we mag them and then depending on depending on what those broom marks look like depending on how firm the concrete is we may we may mag it twice we don't usually steel trow our exterior concrete here in maine because it's got air entrainment in it um, air entrainment helps protect the concrete from freeze and thaw cycles it's these little tiny microscopic air bubbles that are injected into the concrete when they batch it so you can't really notice them there but when you go to finish if you steel trowel exterior concrete and you seal that surface off with the steel trowel sometimes it could trap some air in there and even after you drag the broom over it it doesn't necessarily always uh, open that surface up enough after you've steel troweled it so at least that's what we found here in Maine so we'll just mag it twice and the you know the mag float usually keeps the surface really good and open even though it's really tight if you mag float it a second time it's really tight but it leaves you a nice broom thinner so this is about a i would say you know it's not a coarse broom it's not a really really fine broom finish like we might put on a pool deck it's kind of a medium broom finish for a patio and that's a lot a lot of the ways that we leave it right there that's a nice looking broom finish So we got the patio all done, that's all broomed, edged and jointed. Now Luke's finishing up the garage. We're working on the garage doors, getting them finished up. This is the second hit on the garage. Usually it takes about four hits, you know, and we'll let it we'll let it cure up a little bit in between hits. 
and it's it's basically shined out and done then we saw cut it today um, but this is a basically what a what a you know a day involves with us here pouring and finishing concrete in Maine whether we're doing houses or garages or you know pool decks or patios or whatever we're doing um, it's usually a teamwork kind of thing and usually when we're finishing concrete like this when we're power trialing stuff you know a lot of jobs Luke and Darren can just finish on their own I'll go set up jobs for the next day Eric is actually uh, he works for us in the summer full-time he's actually a full-time school teacher so you know we only get him for a few weeks a year Eric's the one in the back with the sunglasses but this is uh, how we accomplish <laughs> getting both these pours done today and finishing this job up so thanks a lot guys for watching come on back we'll see you on the next one